Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dennis Quilty, and I'm an attorney at the Grammar Quilty in New Orleans. I'm here today representing the new owners of these two properties, the Silver Mine Development Company, Jack Margarity, House of Zones, Jerry Hill. In addition to tonight, the uh, Banker East Plus and Savings Bank, John Mignozzi, who's here with us to lend his support to the project. Uh, we, we know that people in the community have been um, had difficulty with this project for a long, long time. We, uh, we have permits go back to the year 2002 on both of these properties. I um, understand it's been a terrible hassle in the neighborhood, and especially to those folks who live nearby. And we've, as a result, thanks to input from the mayor's office and uh, Councilor Ramatina's office, we have attempted to make outreach to those about property owners, Fioria, Fiore's restaurant, and uh, Claudia uh, on the other side of the property. And we've met with both of them and will continue to do so in terms of trying to mitigate construction impacts if we're lucky enough to go forward. Uh, we want to just send the message first and foremost that it's a new development team, new owners, and we understand there have been many, many mistakes made which we'd like to correct and get on with getting this project built. Um, as you heard in the, in the intro, it's actually two properties, 244 to 246 Rear Hanover and 20 Armenter Street. The 20 Armenter Street building, which is going under the title of Teatro Residential, is uh, primarily completed. The request there is to convert some space which was permitted for retail, which the present ownership team finds does not work very well, to residential, so that the conversion is all internal to that building. Basically, uh, there was an addition actually granted. Um, so the two-step process in 202, the, the use to convert the existing buildings to residential retail was allowed. At that time, a request to add an additional floor was not allowed. About seven years later, there was a second application to add the floor, which was allowed, and that floor was added to allow increased residential space in the building. It did not designate that space as units. So what we'd like to do is ask permission to use that space to develop three units convert three additional retail, three existing retail units to add six units to the mix. All of these spaces are in allowed uh, space, if you will. And all of the work will take place inside the property. There's no height addition, there's no anything being done to the building. So the permissions which were granted, we'd like to basically rearrange to make them more viable for residential use. And that's what we would request for the Parmenter Street property. The Hanover Street property uh, was, was also before the Board of Appeal in 2002, and a series of uh, permissions were granted to uh, increase the height on two levels of the building. Uh, is that height that we'd like to go, go to today? We're not seeking any increase in that, which was granted in 2002. But in that case, it also allowed retail spaces, which when the new team went in to look at it, they said it just didn't make any sense whatsoever and they'd like to convert those to residential. And the other units come from reconfiguring the units which were placed in the building, making some of them small, to create the total number of units that we request. We'd be happy to go over the, the numbers and square footage and things of that nature. So in both cases, it's seeking permission to do what was originally granted permission to do in 2002 and 2009, and to finally get the job done. You know, it, it's not going to be easy or you know, necessarily uh, uh, quiet, but we will promise to get it done as quickly as humanly possible. These folks have no interest in letting this sit. Uh, it's our, you know, our belief that people in the community don't want to see it sit any longer. Um, and again, that's that's basically what we're trying to do here is to build out the property. We did. I, I, do, I don't want to hide this from you, but we we were at the uh, we were meeting, and this is a proposal only of the Hanover Street facade, and we received uh, a great deal of negative uh, feedback on this. And well uh, understood that we uh, took that to heart, and it met a number of times with the architect, and we are seeking to redesign this facade of the building. I can tell you that it's, it's blank on uh, this side of the property because we were trying to accommodate a, a butter immediately next door who didn't want to see lots of windows and things peering into his roof decks and outdoor patios and things of that nature. So it was, what's the height right there? It's 55. Um, so that will be changed and 
as you all know, I mean, this going to the Board of Appeal, if we are lucky enough to get the permission to change these uses back to residential, we'll, it'll be subject to BRA design review. And as I suggested to these folks, you know, it doesn't matter what anybody wants, the BRA is going to tell us what's acceptable, and we assume that will be with input from the community in terms of windows and light and changes in color and style of brick and every, everything. So we understand that that's what the, what's the, what's the date of the ZBA? It's uh, the 21st of May. 21st of May. Um, that wasn't, and those, are those designs, did you inherit those? I mean, I know you guys like the 15 million no, in the last 12 years. <coughs> no, basically, we did this, you know, first go around the design just to, uh, to try and, just to try and, uh, figure out what the massing was going to be and we were, how we were going to get light into the building. Because uh, it's, it's, it's like a bowling alley. So, it's this, what it looks like. This is, <laughs> this is um, the last week they said thought it looked like the apple <laughs> No, the so BFW was this. Was, the European was, right? Yeah, so yes, not that one. Yeah, this, this here is a light well in the side of the building to get light into the interior of the units. This we were just trying to figure out how we're going to get uh, light into the front of the building. Um, the reason that there are no windows here is to, as Dennis reiterated, to give for consideration of Fiori and his deck and his dining room so people aren't looking directly into his dining rooms. We're going to work something out on this face, whether it's false windows or whatever. Uh, we'd love to be able to put some windows in there, but we're still trying to tweak that. This will all get softened up. We want to get as much light into the building as, as possible. It, it probably you know, won't be even close to as modern as this is. This here is not aluminum. This is all this is all cast. Uh, it's all what? It's all precast. It's, it's not aluminum. The, the mullions in the windows right now are aluminum. They don't necessarily have to be you know, anything like this. You know, we're thinking of maybe pulling some of the patina um, you know, on, on some of the old uh, bow fronts, you know, using some of that color um, to try and soften it up. But it's, it's, it's a work in progress because the, you know, the geometry is so weird in this building. The size of the lot was weird. The unit configurations are restricted because of the way the alley you know, triangulates. So you know, as we work through that, this will all get softened up. Uh, we had a couple of meetings already on this, and you know we're you know throwing things out there. And obviously, as Dennis said, you know we've got to take it before the BRA and uh, discuss you know even some of their ideas. What's the height of the adjoining building? I mean, it looks like the twin towers are standing. Yeah. So. yeah no, that, it, I mean, I realize it's 55 feet, but I was just. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is probably. Uh, I'm gonna say this is probably you know in the 40s, 38, 40, 42 range. Um, I'm not sure. This actually, this height and this height are the same. It's just it, you know, the rendering doesn't do, doesn't do it justice. Okay. It's, it's the same height as the, the building with the Yeah, it's the same height as right this point right here and this point right here are the same. It's just the way it was. It was it, it's taken just to kind of give an idea. I mean, if we took the shot coming the other way. It'd be a lot less dramatic than, than it looks like. Yeah. What plans of any sort of parking within the building? There's 25 parking spaces mm -hmm. so they didn't go through the entrance and uh, down below. And we came up last week's meeting was, was trash as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an area down there that we're going to be able to um, isolate as a trash room. Um, it's going to be those you know plastic you know, wheelies. No way somebody's going to pull up and push a foyer dumpster up that ramp once it's in there. So uh, we took that into consideration. Anyone else have any questions? How many apartments in all these units? 28 total. I have a question. Do you go, when you go to the when you go to the CBA, do you go for, for both buildings separately or is this one project? It's two different, it's two addresses, two cases. So you'll go up and they'll call. Obviously, they'll call 25 minutes, then they'll call 240. Right. Yeah. It, it'll work as one building, though. Okay. But it, it's two separate addresses. But if you walk in 25 minutes, will you be able to walk through and come on? You go through the garage, you can. Go through the garage, you can. That's what I want to run away from something. <laughs> like you <old> it? <laughs>
Name. Yeah. Sure. Name Bob Bernie, Thank you. Battery Walk, and I uh, appreciate the comments you made about the design of the meeting last week. I appreciate that. But one of the issues um, that remain, you know, I have to figure out a way around it, is that it just kind of surprises me uh, that right in the front, of course, right in Hanover Street, it's a garage door with people going in and out with cars, and therefore the sidewalk and the traffic. Think of, think of the uh, somebody wanting to pull in and pull out. Come and think about this past weekend. I'm surprised the council was more concerned about it. Well, it's, a, it's a good question because people are going to have to pull in and pull out just like they do. Um, I know Janelle lives on Hanover Street, pulls his car out, they have the driveway in the back. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah, yeah, they'll be a beeper. I'm sure they'll have that, but I, want to, I don't personally, when, when I'm in my vehicle, and I have to go somewhere on a Friday. I know when to drive up in. I mean, I know when to. I understand there are people coming from all over the place to come to the North End, but I've, I, 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 I submit on Friday night, wherever my car is, that's where it is. If I can't get somewhere by public transportation, I don't go. I think the majority of the people I think are living here. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no, on, on top of it, just, I think that the, the, the whole issue with this is we're going to end up with 20 apartments. We don't have 25 parking spots to go with it. That yeah. was on 28 other people that want to park their car in the North End. So, I mean, I think that putting up the fact that we're going to have uh, about a parking spot on Hanover Street so that is going to be access. Mind you, it's been construction access. So we've had big trucks coming in and out of there. It's been a parking lot for bulldozers over the last almost 12 years. Well, yes. yeah. So, this is not, I don't think it's an issue that anybody who lives in North End is not familiar with. But again, I think that the big asset for, for us as a community when we have such a large development is the fact that there is parking. We have the issue on Parmenta Street with 44 Prince Street. I think that the fact that those folks are parking their cars some way that makes a lot of sense for us because we're used to smaller dwellings with less capacity. And you know, four apartment units, four apartment uh, buildings are one issue uh, and you can pretty much handle that in two way streets, uh, pretty much by the footprint of the, uh, the building, the length of the building if you wish. Uh, adding another 20 parking I'm taking out the way back from the neighborhood. I think that it's worth the hassle with the door on Hanover Street. Yeah, we'll put we'll, we'll have a beginning as well as the, you know a, a buzzer. We're just gotta figure out what, what a you know a good decibel level is mm -hmm. and where it's not gonna be intrusive to anybody. But then people walking on the sidewalk will know that it's that it's happening. Or is it just an elevator? Has a driveway too, also. So there's a driveway there already. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think what we, when, we, when we sit down with TPW is, is maybe just keep that Fiori's curb cut to the edge of our curb cut the same and not put one of those idiotic little ones in the middle. You know, that everybody drives over and never pays attention to. Anyone else have any questions? Do you have an on site question or a type of virtual? I am, yes. Yeah, yeah Virgil, Virgil's got, uh, working with us. Uh, He's going to monitor all the construction and, and uh, deal with any community issues. And, you know, I can be there in 20 minutes anyway. Everybody know what's going on with Hanover Street, Rush? No. All right. Dick, did you have questions? Uh, just what I hope is a, a helpful suggestion on what to do with the exterior facade um, uh, to put it in context with other buildings in the area. 64 to 66 Salem Street, which is where Going Bananas is, was built fairly recently. And walking by it uh, the other day, it looks to me as though it's been there for a long time. And I just suggest that you take a look at that and perhaps be inspired by it. Thank you. Okay. Hey. I'm not really that great. Down you and I are um, Not really that great. You can build a parking garage underneath. But if it's going to stop the valet parkings from triple parking in front, right on Hanover Street, <laughs> then I'm kind of far it. <laughs> Okay, that's one. Uh, why won't you put some windows on the top of the building face and that way where Fiori's building is so short and... Um, that, that could be a possibility. We're trying, we're, we're trying to look at that. You know, now. There's, there's that. a property line issue here that we're trying to address. That, 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 way, that was done for Fiori. They, they did that for Fiori so they, they won't upset Fiori. But I think that on the edge of that building, I think Fiori may, may let them put some windows on, on, on the front side. We, we sit down and that something like that may, may be 
Awesome. So it just doesn't look like a brick wall. Yeah, really yeah. Really yeah. Just like two yeah. stories up. Yeah, and I mean, because yeah. the restaurant's yeah. low, and the only thing that's a little bit above is his um, room deck, which he potties every night, and he's probably going to be worried that the people will be complaining that his music is too loud. That's exactly right. So that's why he doesn't want the window open. I invest in the window. You get on Hanover Street, you invest in the windows. Even for the neighbors, yeah, yeah. you want to sell it. If you're going to rent them, you want them to stay out of the way. So I'm going to move the windows. I'm going to take one more question from Dave, and then I'll be only at five minutes left. Thank you, Dave, for your place. Thank you very much for adding a common trash handling area within the building with plastic barrels, just like 44 Print Street does. Uh, we, uh, the neighborhood, should be demanding that of any project that has a certain number of units or more, pick a number, 10 to 12 units or so, and it's a shame, for instance, that the developer at Petchy's restaurant block there was allowed to uh, get our support and develop the building without including any kind of common trash handling there. Uh, also, relative to the design, and that's the main reason I'm standing here, is uh, I want to say thank you for not including bow fronts. Because that just expands the building, the mass of the building, over the public right of way. So I hope you won't add both fronts. No, we're just talking about the fatigue. I, I know. <laughs> That's what made me think of it when you started talking about that building. Uh, so I'm glad that there's no both fronts there. Clearly, the community is concerned. At the DLC meeting, there was a lot of concern about the design of this building. And I want to know what is going to be the process by which the community gets to review and have input to the design of this building. The leverage we have now, both with the Residents Association and the, the Neighborhood Council, is that the hearing is not until May 21st. So we both have the opportunity to put off our approvals until our May meetings and get to see the design that they have now said will be ready by that meeting. But there, Whatever you decide to do, there needs to be a process and there needs to be some leverage. Can I just this one? Sure. Uh, this, this, this building for some reason seems to have a curse on it, and the cursor is the curse of the public hearing. You know? And we've had, had 12 years of public hearings. We have a home on Hanover Street, and we have uh, you know, semi abandoned uh, property from now on Parenta Street. I mean, we should make this as expeditious as possible so we can move in the direction we just think it's finished. Now that we have somebody who seems that can do so, because we've had nothing but, you know, it's been an issue for the neighborhood for way too long, and to continue to tackle it along the way, it's just going to make this matter that much longer. You know, I would suggest, you know, we, if we, if, you know, if we can make an agreement in trust that, uh, you know, we're going to look at the concerns of the community I come up with something that this is everybody. Sure, I, think it's actually, it, I, I, I wish it was as easy as trust. It, it isn't always, but I mean, the BRA is not. The, they tell us what to do. I mean, you're here in the building. Other people, you guys know what happens up there. I can tell you, it's probably one or two people. You know the same names I know. I mean, pick up the phone and call them. I mean, we have to go through the. I know of no. I know of no public process in but the I, BRA the, review the of these take your phone I mean, the neighborhood has to say this is what we want to the say they don't like this, change it, and we're going to say, okay, because we need their approval. I, I, think, think, I, think, I, think, I think I'll... We want this to be a nice-looking building. We want the neighborhood to be happy, and we want everybody to like it. We're trying to do the right thing here. I think, I think a lot of people misunderstand what the BRA is supposed to do. The BRA is not supposed to put a building that matches anything 90% of the time. The BRA's basic understanding of building something like that and what they're looking for is a mixture of the future and what exists. Then it's not to take a building and make it look like the building next door. I know everybody wants it to be like that. But that is the BRA's direction 90% of the time when they're looking at these structures. They're trying to they're trying to take a building, show a little bit of modern technology in it with a little bit of what was there from 100 years ago. If you try to go either way, if you try, it does, it does look like a modern skyscraper. I understand it does. But I don't think that they're going to allow that to turn around and just make it look like a building from 200 years ago. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that they basically try to mix a little bit of both together to make it look 
like it's we're moving forward with things instead of moving backwards with things. I'm gonna make one more comment before we can take a vote only because the 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 building closes in two minutes. Will the design review be done before you go to the zoning board? No, what we're gonna do is go get the architect to give us some ideas based upon input from these meetings we've had and take that plan and do a preview with the, the uh, BRA staff. I mean, you can always do this. You follow Michael Knizzo or you follow David Carlson and say, here's the project, here's where it is. We've got these ideas where you tell us what you think. Because it saves time at the back end. Because you're then not redesigning it after you've had potentially a board vote. You're now working in the direction that they want you to be going in. So when you get to the hearing, it's not done because they still have to stamp the plans and they may want further changes based on input from people to hear it. But at least you'll be moving in the direction. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, they'd say this is not this is not going to fly. They're, they're going to have us punch holes in this. There, there, there will be light and air on the side of the building. The windows may not be functionable, but they'll make them. Yeah, so that's, yeah. but we'd like to go back with something closer to that and say, here's the problem we've got. We've got neighbors who don't want all of the yeah. light and windows on their buildings. We get others who want the design who can help us work with this. So that when we get to the hearing, we're getting closer to what okay. they would approve. We're sensitive to all your, your comments and your concerns. And, you know, we're not, you know, I mean, with the trash issue alone, you brought it to our attention and it didn't even come to mind until you raised it last week. That's the point. We so, raised some pretty good ideas. So why not give us the chance to do that? Well, and also, typically, when projects come to us, projects of this size, like the project on Salem Street, like uh, the uh, Vincent Hamill's project on Hanover Street. Those projects usually come to us with a near final design. So we can see what's going to be there. And we're just not there with this project. See, our problem right now, too, is time constraint. Because we're pushing to the final to get to the ZBA to get these things approved. At the same time we do a design, and we're burning dollars. And, you know, we don't want this to... We we'll just know. talked to we're going to have by the time we go back to your meeting on the 11th, we're going to have some designs for you guys to look at and you know kind of work we'll with some sketches. We'll, 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 we'll do everything we can to make sure we have you know work architectural work to show you what that means. Thank you. We're not going anywhere. You can find that see what I'll do is provide you the same material so you can distribute things here. Does anyone want to make a motion? So Ann has made a motion to support. To convert the commercial retail. With a motion to support 24 to 344, 246R on Henry Street to convert um, from commercial retail spaces to residential use and increase the number of residential units from 15 to 28. That's correct. With the um, as I say, and she would like to see the design review. Plans to be shown to both your, your yes. board and the board. Um, anyone second? Tony second. So there's a motion. The second, if anyone uh, all in favor, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. right now. All in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All opposed, zero. Seven nothing. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.